Welcome in today's session. We will be looking at the histological organization of the cerebral cortex. I've done a video on the histological organization of the cerebellar cortex. If you need it, you can look at my the provide the link in the description. Now, in today's session, we'll be asking ourselves the following questions. What are the types of cells? Sorry, what are the types of cerebral cortex? What are the types of cells in the cerebral cortex? And what are the layers of the cerebral cortex? Welcome all, my name is Waris Mwenyele, the Yule Daktari. So, types of cerebral cortex. So, phylogenetically, we have three types. The archicortex, the paleocortex, and the neocortex. So, the cortical areas vary in phylogenetic scale. The oldest form, the archicortex. Archicortex is the oldest, and the most recent is neocortex, and an intermediate is the paleocortex. The human brain has all three, all these three. But lower animals, lower animals such as say reptiles, you might find them only with the archicortex. But neocortex is confined to mostly man. But archicortex, neocortex is confined to man and higher primates, but the archicortex is found in all vertebrates. So the archicortex and the paleocortex together constitute the allocortex. Archicortex is phylogenetically the oldest and constitutes the sizable portion of the cerebrum of lower vertebrates. In man, this is rather primitive cortex and is only represented in the hippocampus and, by, and parts of the encephalic regions. Encephalic regions are the ones which are involved in uh, olfaction. It is simple and it is made up of three layers. So archicortex is made up of three layers. Paleocortex is an intermediate. So it is intermediate between archicortex and neocortex. So in between you have paleocortex. So it can have four, four layers or five layers. Then neocortex is the most recent and it is, com it is, it is comprised of six layers. So in today's session, we'll be looking at the histological organization of the neocortex to be specific. Okay, so those are the three types of cerebral cortex, archicortex, paleocortex, neocortex. Let's look now at the cell types of the cerebral cortex. So the cerebral cortex has various cell types. These are neuronal cells. But in this, remember, in the nervous system, we have two types of cells there. Neuroglio cells and the neuro cells. Neuroglio cells are the supporting cells. You will find them everywhere. They are. They will include the. They will include the say astrocytes, also oligodendrocytes. Those ones are the neuroglio cells. Those ones you will find them everywhere in the central nervous system. So these are neuronal cells. You can see we have here, one of the cell types is the horizontal cell of Kajar, Roman Kajar. He was a, he was a neurologist. Then we have, you can see they are horizontal. That is why they are called the horizontal cells of Kajar. Then you have this, this other one here. This is the, it's a perikion or the, cell body, then the axon is moving upwards. This is known as the cells of Martinotti. Then here we have a very important cell. If you look at its cell body, you can see it is. it looks like those pyramids, like the pyramid of Giza in Egypt. You can see, so they looked at it and they said, you know what we will call it? Pyramid of cell. So, you should always note that its axon is, is moving inferiorly downwards. It, it's apical dendrite. This is its apical dendrite here. Don't confuse those. This is its dendrite. 
this is its axons. Also, these are dendrites. It has only one axon moving inferior. Then we have this other here. If you look at this cell, you can see it has very many dendrites terminating into the cell body. Then it has an axon here. So they looked at it and they were like, you know what? It looks like a star. Why don't we name it a steroid cell? There. Then we have this other one. Its cell body, it, its cell body is like a it's fusiform. It's its cell body is like a fusiform dilatation. So they call it a fusiform cell. So those are the cell types of the cerebral cortex. Let's let's look at, at a brief de description of each. So pyramidal cells. So they are pyramidal in shape with their axes directed towards the surface. The axon arises from the base of the cell body where the dendrites arise from its apex and basal angle. The axons enter the white matter as projection fibers. According to their size, they are called small. They can either be small, medium, and large. Okay. So the latter, the large pyramidal cells are also known as the pyramidal cells of Betts or Betts cells. So, as I had said, this is its dendrite, apical dendrite, which is originated from the apex. Then we have dendrites here, which are terminating the basal angle. Then the axon moves towards the white matter. So, they are I've said they are classified according to size. We have small, medium, and large. The large ones are also known as the pyramidal cells of beds or bed cells. So then we go to the steroid or granule cells. They are much smaller and their cell body measure eight, eight times in diameter. I think this should be eight micrometers. Sorry for that. They have a star-shaped bodies. That is why they were called steroid with, their, with short axon and many dendrites. These cells are so many and appear like granules, okay? Granules in nasal stained material, hence the name granule cell. However, in some areas of the cortex, they are so numerous that they usually resemble a crowd of dust particles. So, Ancient Greek, in Greek, a crowd was known as a conius. So, so the, the early scientists, scientists, those areas where there were many uh, grand cells and they resembled a crowd of dust, they called those areas, they called those areas the conial cortex. So then we have fusiform, a fusiform cell body with the wrong axon being vertical to the surface. They are more concentrated in the deepest cortical areas. They, they are mainly found in the lamina six. We will look at the areas of the cerebral cortex shortly. Then you have the horizontal cells of Kajar are fusiform and oriented horizontally, found mostly in the superficial area, the lamina one, the molecular area. Cells of Martinotti, they are multipolar neurons and they are present throughout the layers of the cerebral cortex. So I want to show you a histological slide. The yeah, histological slide will help someone to, this is a histological slide of the cortex. So at higher magnification, you can see here, we have this, can you see its cell body, it's somewhat pyramidal. Then you have an apical dendrite here. Then here, here you see at the basal angle, we have some dead rates terminating there, and an axon should be moving here. So this is the pyramidal cell. Okay, and you can see there are many. Uh, from here, you can see like that is a pyramidal cell, that one. Now this one here, you can see it has star-like processes. Yeah, star, many dendrites terminating into it, so that is a steroid cell. So those were the types of neurons or cells in the cerebral cortex. So layers of the cerebral cortex, I said we will look at the neocortex, six layers, lamina one, two, three, four, five, and six. 
lamina one is known as the molecular layer. Then followed by, so this is superficial to deep. The most superficial is molecular layer, then external granular layer, then external pyramidal layer, then internal granular layer, then internal pyramidal layer, and the multiform layer. So um, you should know all these layers, how they are arranged from superficial to deep, and they are not that challenging. So we start only with the molecular layer, then external granular, external granular layer, it has granular cells, granular cells or the state cells. Then external pyramid area, we will mostly have the small pyramid or cells. Then the internal granular area has, uh, has internal granular area has other state cells. Then internal pyramid will have the mainly the medium and the right size pyramid cells, the cells of beds. Then the multiform area will have the fusiform, fusiform cells. Let me show you the cell types. You can see in the molecular area, we have mainly the horizontal cells of Kajar. In the external granular area, here you must find granular cells, the state cells. Then in the external pyramid area, we have the small, the small, uh, small and some medium sized pyramid cells. Then in the internal granular area, we find mainly the other state cell or the granule cells. Then in the internal pyramid area is where you find mainly the large pyramid cells of beds. Then in the in the in the 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 layer six multiform layer you find mainly um, mixed cells the the fusiform. Note that cells of Martinotti are present throughout in any. In any of the ramina, we have the cells of Martinotti. So let's look at that in the text. So molecular stroke plexiform, the outermost predominant is made up predominantly of nerve fibers and few scattered horizontal cells of Kajar. External granular is made up mainly of densely packed stated stroke granule cells. Then the external pyramid is made up of small and medium sized pyramid cells. The size of the cells increase from superficial to deeper borders of this layer. So at the upper area of the external granular, you find the small sized pyramid cells, but deeper, you find the medium sized. Then the internal granular is made up of closely packed stated cells. In the middle of this, so granular, always remember granular area has granular cells or the stated cells. In the middle of this layer is a horizontal band of white fibers known as the white stria or the external band of Beringia, Beiraja. So in the external, sorry, in the internal granular area, you find in the middle we have uh, some white fibers which traverse it horizontally. That is known as the white stria or the external band of the iraja. So it is most marked in the visual cortex, especially in the cortex that is found at the banks of the calcaline sulcus. You'll find it very, the external band of the iraja is very prominent there. And uh, in that area, it is known as the stria of genari. Stria of genari. So also note that the internal granular area is the input layer. It is the input layer of the cerebral cortex. That is where fibers arising from extracortical areas, areas outside the cortex will terminate here. Say the, say the, like the, um, attract, like the medial remniscus, the third order neurons of the medial remniscus pathway will terminate here in the internal granular area. Then the internal pyramid area, also known as the ganglionic area, is made up of large pyramid cells of beds. The basal part of this area contains a thin band of horizontally arranged fibers called the inner band of Beiraja. These cells amount, account for about 30% of the projection fibers of the corticospinal tract. So the axons of the bed cells constitute 3% of the projection fibers of corticospinal tract. Then you have the last layer, the multiform of the 
polymorphic. It is made up of cells of multiple forms and the neurons of various sizes and shapes. This layer usually fused with the white matter. So remember that in the cere cerebrum, the gray, the gray matter is outside and the white matter is inside. And like in the spinal cord, where it is there, vice versa. So let's have a quick overview. Let's have a quick overview. And so what were the types of cerebral cortex? I said archicortex, pareo cortex, neocortex, types of cells in the cerebral cortex. We had the horizontal cells of Kajar, cells of Martinotti, Luciform cells, pyramidal cell, stated cells to the granule cells. What are the areas of the cerebral cortex? From superficial to deep, it's molecular area, also known as the plexiform layer, outer granular area, outer pyramid area, inner granular area. In a pyramid area and the multiform stroke polymorphic area. So, thank you guys. Subscribe for more content.